Hello, how's it going? Today I want to show you something that I've just put together. Um, it is for, this museum's not obsolete display display, it is a display of displays. I, I cannot think of another way of describing it. Various um, types of um, displays, uh, from cold cathode tubes like Nixie tubes and things over to um, electroluminescence, VFD, this, that and the other, and yeah, I've just made a new display for the display display. So a few months back, we looked at a display that I made for the display display, which included two really big Nixie tubes. Massive they are. Well, today we're gonna to be looking at an even bigger type of Nixie tube. So well, I've been in touch with Dali Bulfani and he has kindly sent over some B stocks of the H tube. So the H Nixie tube is possibly the largest Nixie tube in the world. I'm sure somebody might comment that there was a larger one, but this one is blooming massive. In fact, it's as big as a headlight. Have a look at that. This is humongous. And yeah, this is one of the B stocks. The, the build process is meticulous with this stuff. They are quite pricey. I have no idea of the actual cost of a working one, but uh, because um, these are using the same voltages and currents and characteristics as normal Nixie tubes, I'm pretty confident that this is probably the biggest you could ever make one because if it gets any bigger, it will be so fragile that it probably would never work. These things are extremely fragile. If you look on the inside, this one for instance, uh, one of the wires is broken. Uh, this is obviously a B-stock, it wouldn't be sent out uh, if it was broken. This, this one was broken in the manufacturing process, but you can see how thin the numbers are and the plates are in order to keep the characteristics of a Nixie tube the same. But you know, if this thing got any bigger, I have no idea if it would even work. It's just amazing the size of this thing. It's an incredible feat of engineering that these things even exist. Well, okay, so here's one that is gonna be on display in the display display, but this one is one that works. If I bring it over here, I've made a little display. This one, of course, is another bee stock that was kindly donated to the museum to be displayed, and a couple of the digits don't work, it doesn't matter, we get, we get the best idea of what this thing is possible and it just means that people are able to see this in real life. But let's have a closer look at this display and see what the fudge it is and then we can have a look at the actual Nixie tube turned on because it's blooming awesome. So this display consists of a uniselector, a GPO uniselector that bounces between the numbers. If you push the button, it turns the number off. When you let it off, the uniselector flicks forwards. So the next time you push the button, you see the next number. It's a very simple kind of idea, but for the display display, it's curated in a way that isn't intended to overwhelm people. Keeping it nice and simple when you've got things in such mass that people are probably only gonna look at for a, a minute or two at max, then uh, I think this is a very good way of displaying what this Nixie tube is. There's a 3D printed mount that is sat on, it's clamped on the top with another 3D printed piece that was bolted onto this bit of wood. And then uh, there's also a relay underneath it. This was the only place I could actually find to put the relay. What this relay's job is, is it turns on when you push the button. So it takes less current to turn on this relay than the coil in the uni selector. And also when you push this button, this relay pushes down and makes a connection to the anode and sends 100 130 volts into, no, maybe 140 volts into the anode of the Nixie tube to turn it on. So if we turn it around, it works exactly the same as any other Nixie tube. So what that means is, we get it a little bit zoomy zoomy. It, what that means is this red wire sat right here is the anode, it's A, so uh, 130, 140 volts goes into here uh, via a coolant limiting resistor that's over there, very small limiting resistor. And around here are all of the cathodes. These correlate to different numbers. You can actually see the numbers labeled on them all. This is connected to uh, ground via the uni selector. So the uni selector sequentially sends each of the numbers to ground. So as you push the button, it flicks over to the next number. As you can see, you can see the functioning of the uni selector. There's loads of videos on this channel and my Look No Mum No Computer channel about that kind of stuff. This is a spark quenching capacitor. This is wired in parallel to the uni selector. So one side is connected to one side of the coil, which is also connected to ground. Then the other side is connected to plus 48 volts, but it's also connected to the switch. Uh, what this does is it stops this causing sparks wherever this is 
contact is being made, in which case that is the relay down here. So this relay won't spark. The contacts won't spark on here because of this spark quenching capacitor. Without this, the big bright lights happen, burns things out, it's not great. Underneath here is the plug to plug in the power. That wires over to this, which is a little bit overbuilt, if I'm honest, you could probably use a smaller one. It takes the 48 volts out of there and transvert, transforms it into 12 volts. That 12 volts then goes over to this, which is a Nixie tube power supply. So it takes the 12 volts, amplify, um, multiplies that up into DC 130, 140 volts. You've got a trim pot there. I twisted it until it all lit up. Then via the current limit resistor, it goes over and connects over to the anode on the back of the Nixie tube. For some reason, uh, two of the digits, number six and number seven, are not working. That's why it's a B stock, of course. But if you look in there, you could see how incredibly fragile some of this stuff is. If if this was subjected to any relatively relative vibrations, it would definitely. In fact, one of the other digits was not working, but I kind of lightly tapped it and managed to dislodge one of these wires that goes up to it, free from the other one, and it solved the issue. So that's pretty good. It's not bloody working. What's going on? I forgot to solder the blooming um, switch. How did I manage to not solder that? Right, there we go. That's soldered on. So now if we push the button, we got a nine. What a beauty. What a bit more light. It is now set up in a spot in the display display. Uh, it'll be there for from this weekend forwards for visitors to use. The, this isn't currently going through the front panel because I haven't put the front panel back on, but as you can see, it's working. All right, except for those, but it's fine. How cool is that? So cool, isn't it? As you can see for size comparison, it is quite a size chunkier than like this normal sized uh, Nixie tube. In fact, the Nixie tube I'm humping hasn't actually got any numbers in it. Yeah, uh, whether it's a defected uh, Nixie tube or a blank, I'm not really sure. But if you look in there, you, if you look really closely, you'll actually see there's no, there's no blooming numbers in there. How weird is that? Very funky. Um, as you can see, yeah, um, the ZM1040 is a very large Nixie tube by vintage standards. And um, yeah, you can see it's pretty big. This is the same one that's in the visitor counter at the museum and also the museum's Uniselector Nixie tube clock, of course. And this is it next to the Zin 80 as well. This is another modern Nixie tube, the same as this. This is, by the way, a brand new Nixie tube. It's just B stock, so there's a defected, couple of defected uh, digits, but as you can see, this is just, it's just bloody massive. It's just blooming huge. So if you find yourself coming to the museum at any point in the future, this is probably still gonna be there. Well, it should be. Inside the display display with all of the other displays and displays and displays, all the other displays. Displays of a display. How many times do you need to say display? So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. How cool is that? It's very cool. Very cool indeed. Anyway, thanks a lot, Dalibor and, uh, and your team for sending over the beast socks. We very much appreciate it. And um, there is more videos to come on these uh, Nixie tubes, but for now we've got a demonstration one sitting right here. Anyway, I'm Sam and this is this museum's not obsolete. We're open every weekend now, so check it out. Double check on the website. And if you want private bookings for recordings and things like that, then get in contact on the website. There's a load of information. But yeah, if you want to come and play on it, then by all means, just pop over and do so. Anyway, ciao for now.